Something that a lot of children find tricky is figuring out where to place the decimal point when you're multiplying decimals. So let's do a couple of examples. So let's do 1.3 times 0 0.24. Typically the way you would start this problem is to turn these into whole numbers, so 13 and 24, and multiply those together and then figure out where to put the decimal point. So we already did 13 times 24 in the, in the previous example, and it comes to 312. So we've done that part of the problem. So let's write down 312. Okay, and then we need to figure out where to put the decimal point. Well, we would count the number of decimal points the number of digits behind the decimal point in each number that we're multiplying. So there's, there's one in 1 1.3 and there's two in 0 0.24. So there's three in total. So if I move the decimal point one, two, three places, then that must be where the decimal point comes right there. Okay, so, but, but what is going on here? Why, uh, why do we have this kind of seemingly odd rule for, for placing the decimal point? Well, this is, this is why it works. So we could write 1.3 as 13 divided by 10. Okay, it's, that's, that's a fractional equivalent to 1.3. And similarly, 0.24, we could write that as 24 over 100. Okay, and then we multiply fractions by multiplying the numerators and multiplying the denominators. So 13 times 24, that's 312. 10 times 100, that's 1,000. So 312 divided by 1,000 as a, as a decimal is 0.312. Okay, so this is, this is why this method works. What we're essentially doing when we're turning this into from multiplying decimals to multiplying whole numbers is, is we're, we're dividing by 10 a bunch of times. So we divide 13 by 10 once to get 1.3 and we divide 24 by 10 twice to get 0.24. So we've divided by 10 three times. Okay, so when we get our whole number here, we have to divide by 10 three times to get our actual answer as a decimal. And so that's, that's, that's the reasoning behind why this, why this method works for figuring out where to place the decimal point. But um, let's do another example just to see how this can become a little tricky if you don't pay attention to what's going on. So let's do 0 0.02 times 2.5. So turn it into a whole number multiplication first. So the whole numbers would be two and 25. And so two times 25, we can just do that in our heads. That comes to 50. So, but then we have to figure out where we're going to put the decimal, the de decimal point. So, we'll write down the 50. And, and then we'll count the decimal points, the decimal places after the decimal point in our numbers. So we've got one, two in point zero 0.02 and one in 2.5. So we're going to have to move the decimal point um, we're going to have to make sure that in our answer, there's, there's three digits to the right of the decimal point. So, so let's do that. Okay, there's three digits behind our decimal point. But sometimes a student will get confused at this point and they'll go, well, I don't need that final zero. 
that one. I, I can just get rid of that because it's, it's redundant. I don't need it. Um, but then they'll, they'll think, well, hang on, now I've only got two, two digits to the right of my decimal point, one, two. Um, but I need three because I've got one, two, three in, in my original numbers. Uh, so this can't be right. So um, I think uh, I think I did something wrong here. Um, I think the answer should be should be this. Okay, because now I've got three digits: one, two, three, to the right of my decimal point. Uh, but of course that's wrong. Okay, the student had it right originally. The answer should be, let's get back to what it should be. This is, this is the correct answer. 0 0.05. Okay, and we can we can kind of show that a little more clearly if we if we use the same method we used over on the left. So, if we write 0 0.02 as a fraction, it's two divided by a hundred, and 2.5 as a fraction would be 25 over 10. Okay, so that would come to fifth if we multiply the numerators, that would come to 50 over a thousand. Okay, uh, we could we could write that as, as five over a hundred, which is point zero five. Okay, so so this is this is the correct answer. This one here, even though it looks like like there's only two digits to the right of the decimal point, and we should have one, two, three. Remember that there's there was that zero. Yeah, that the student got rid of initially, which is okay, but it but it can get them a little bit confused. So that's one thing to be wary of when you're multiplying decimals, figuring out where the decimal point goes. So that brings us to the questions. So first question is going back to the chef story for multiplying integers is think about this equation, minus two times three plus minus four. Okay, so what is the chef doing to represent this equation? Minus two times three plus minus four. And then what is the resulting change in the temperature? Okay, so that's question one. And then question two, Sadiq solves 12.5 times 1 point, sorry, 12.5 times 0 0.08 by multiplying 125 times eight to get a thousand. So that's, that's all good. But then he writes the answer 0 0.001. And his reasoning is this number has one, two, three digits to the right of the decimal point and that must be correct because I've got one, two, three digits in total to the right of the decimal point in the numbers that I was multiplying. Uh, but you should be able to see that that's clearly not correct. That, that answer is much too small. So what should the answer be?